Good morning, good morning. My name is Rick Nota here in beautiful Encinitas, California. And I've got to tell you, with being the host here of T3 Talks and the founder of T3 Body, uh, today is today is one of those things where I want to slow it down a little bit because we're on part two of It Takes a Village to Raise a Family. Now, why I want to slow it down is because I wanted to give you a little personal story about my family. Now, a few years ago, I was sitting there and I'm working at my doctor's office and <laughs> I'm sitting there in, in, uh, in, in with the doctor and I hear a, like, I hear a, and I go, yeah, come on in. And we were with a patient and the doc's right there and my receptionist comes in and goes, oh, Rick, um, I'm just going to go to the right aid down the street and I'm going to go get your daughter. I'm like, What? You're going to go to the right aid down the street to go get my daughter. Yeah, no worries. Don't worry about it. Door closes. I'm typing. Doc looks at me. He goes, do you need to take care of something? I go, I think I do. And he goes, go, you know, I'll take care of the rest. We're almost done. So I go to, I go to right aid. Long story longer, you guys. My oldest daughter with her youngest daughter and a friend, all right, with my credit card, uh, go to purchase a few things. Well, my oldest daughter who at the time I think was 17, yeah, about 17, all right, thought it was cool to steal some eyeliner. Now, if you know anything, you guys, don't fucking, excuse me, don't effing do that in a CVS, Walgreens. They, they're like security, like every inch of that place is done because they're, they're one of the biggest places that people shoplift. So my daughter shoplifts with a credit card in her, in her hand, an eyeliner, gets caught. Now, my youngest daughter is there with her friend, so they're, they're accomplices duh, 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 in all of this. Well, I literally walk in, and when I tell you guys I walk in, I walk in like a jarhead. People are at the register. They move out of my way. I don't ask them. Literally, my directness, I go right there. I walk in. There's a security guard and this, and I go to my daughter in that bellowing deep voice that only Marines can do, I literally say, Michaela, turn around. I don't even want to look at you. So as I do this, she turns around, and the security guard has the audacity to say, dude, what's the, what are you doing? Like, what's going on here? And literally, do you guys, I lose it. Because... When it takes, a, it takes a village to raise a family, correct? That security guard just told me in an in a indirect way that he doesn't feel it's my responsibility to take the blame for my daughter stealing. Let me say that again. It's my duty or it's my responsibility as a parent to take the responsibility for my daughter stealing. Why did I pause there? Because a lot of you don't even believe that. A lot of you believe, oh, she stole whatever, and she should that should be whatever. No, there's something that I don't do as a parent. I'm not listening to what she's saying. I'm not being aware of her nonverbal. My friends and my family around me are being, yeah, 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 she's great, right? That's not, we don't want a village of idiots, you guys. We want a village of individuals that want to be like Sparta, that want to rise ourselves up. So during that time, what I missed was that my daughter was going through that 17-year-old adrenaline junkie. You know what that means. You know, some of it hits you in 17, then you get another case of it at 21, and trust me, when I hit my 40s, I got that same thing again, all right? But here's what I learned about adrenaline, okay, is that as a Marine, there's a difference between responsible adrenaline and just, just straight-up stupidity, okay? Now, what did I do to harness that? Well, besides me getting loud and vocal and almost getting arrested and a gun pulled on me, that's a true story, all right? I sat back and figured out what she was trying to do. She was trying to, you know, kind of get some adrenaline. So I have a, a client of mine who has some paddle boards. And out here in Encinitas, there is, we're right off the ocean. But the ocean's real choppy here. So for paddleboarding, you got to be pretty experienced. So my client has a home 
where there's a channel and it's called the La Jolla Cove. So you, so he's got canoes, he's got kayaks. So you, I go, hey, can I borrow or use your facility so that I can take my daughter out on the water? He goes, sure, not a problem. Now, my daughter's a good swimmer. She's not a great swimmer. So I throw a life vest on her. I put her on the top of the board, and we go paddle boarding out. We're in the middle of the ocean. So as you see back here, dead ocean, right? It's just nothing for miles and miles away. Imagine you being on top of that ocean now on a paddleboard, okay? You want to talk about adrenaline? Shark can come up and eat us any second. A wave can come out and take us out, and we have to swim to shore for our lives. Or we can have a seal that's there at the La Jolla Cove push us off our board, and guess what? At that point right there, we've got to figure out. we got to get back on our board. we got to get back on our board. That's adrenaline. But what I'm showing, what I showed my daughter is that we are in the middle of the La Jolla Cove. There's nothing around. There's nothing there. And at any second, we could get taken out by any non-known factor. Now, does the seven Ps work there? Only to a certain extent, man. You're a good swimmer. You've got a life vest. You've got this. But if a whale decided to eat us for that day, guess what? That was, that was the meal. That's what life was intended. That pauper pyre planning, <laughs> that guy had a little bit more foresight, that will, all right, about that. So as my daughter and I are on this paddleboard, the really cool thing that happens is a seal literally pops up and goes, Ooh, and scares the bejesus out of her. It almost takes me out too, and we do like this on the, on the paddleboard. But what happened was my daughter understood what I meant. I go, Michaela, right now, could you swim to shore? She said, no, that's adrenaline. I said, right now, how do you feel? And she said it. I'm scared. I feel unprepared. I've, exactly. How do we take that fear away? We plan more. Now, we get back. She, you know, it's not overnight. It's one of those things that we're, we're constantly reminding her. I'll sometimes go to Michaela going, oh, oh, oh. Um, and she goes, oh, like, oh, shit, he's talking about adrenaline. All right, she remembers that, okay? Now, fast forward to right to Sunday. You guys have seen in pictures before. You'll see right here, Miss Janet. Love to love her to death because you see that smile on her face as she's doing a jumping jack. That was actually from our Saturday workout, our Sunday workout after we did potato chip on Saturday. Janet's been with me for like now almost eight years. She uh, kicked opiates and has Crohn's. Mother of two and mother of two dogs, and her daughter uh, Addie, who was training me when she was a little kid. When she was five, it's all cool till she hurt 13 and ain't cool to train anymore. All right. So she's too cool for school. Goes to her mom. I want some adrenaline. So what does Janet do? She goes, hey, Coach Rick, my daughter wants some adrenaline. What do you think we can do? Uh, and, she, and, I, and I go and I said, well, Ad, doesn't Addie like that I shoot weapons? She goes, yeah, I this. let's go to take her to the gun range. So if you can see here in the pictures right there, there I am again using that ecosystem of teaching, that village, that community, that accountability, and that fun is showing Miss Addie and Miss Janet, who's from Canada, just for you to know, where they have a different relationship with violence, you know, in a good way, all right? They keep their doors open and use guns for what they're supposed to be, hunting game, all right? She took the courage to show her daughter leadership by example. Now, do you think I had Addie shoot the gun first? Eh, wrong answer. Her mom shot the gun first. Because she put that her daughter on her back and say, listen, I'm the warrior. I'm the Wonder Woman. I'm the empowered person, and I'm going to show you how to do this. And after she did it, the example that she led was, again, body posture. All of the stuff that we've used, Janet was able to transition it very easily because her plank strength and everything was there to do, to do the simple act, the fearful act of putting rounds down range. And I enjoy that because what that does is, as a coach, shows the entire ecosystem and evolution of really the biological, the psychological, the social, and the spiritual. And here, as we build to get better and stronger, we, I encourage more families to really come in and join and understand that the biological is only one part of this. So when I say our motivation inspires you to be better, it's taking the confidence to allow the community and that village to help raise that family. See you guys tomorrow.
thanks for checking out our videos. If you want to go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and hit that button right below. Or if you want to check out the latest video right here over my shoulder, go ahead and click that link. If you want to check us out on our social networks, we're at T3 Body Encinitas. That's T3 Body Encinitas. Or shoot me a quick uh, email at info at T3 Body Encinitas, where our motivation inspires you to be better. See you guys soon.